I can't be the only one who thought that United stole a win from Brighton. Brighton dominated us for the majority of the game, for the whole of first half, for like 60 minutes of the second half. And they had so many chances to finish the game off. Every single player on the team probably had one or two shots on goal. And they wasted all of them. The last match they had 10 games. At United, Brighton was the worst one of them all. It was just so boring. Brighton had chances, couldn't score. United weren't even attacking or couldn't even attack. And yet somehow United managed to win. That's what you call a heist. This game showed us the quality of Martinez, right? Martinez came back into the team after such a long time. And he played really well. Whenever Martinez plays, there's just this composure in the team. That the team can hold on defensively. His passing is good. His communication is good. He just brings calmness to the team. Solidity to the team. And like I talked about it in my previous video that Casemiro is on his redemption arc. Even in this game, he played pretty well. He had the assist for the dialogue goal too. And he made another goal line clearance for the second game in a row. I still think that Casemiro should leave at the end of this season. But at least he's coming back into the form a little bit. Just before the FA Cup final. I do hope Casemiro doesn't do a blender in that FA Cup final game. And this should give him enough confidence to be able to play well in that game. On the other hand, Abrabat, despite being so well last game, in this game he played bad. He was dispossessed so many times. He was one of the biggest reasons why Betting kept attacking us. Whenever he got the ball, he just got tackled by someone and lost position and Betting attacked. I think this might be why Ten Hag doesn't want to keep him as a permanent signing, but I do think that this clumsiness of his is down to not having enough game time. But it's also true that it's not good enough. I think we are aiming for two central midfielders. One is a normal number 8 and one is a CDN. But if both Casemiro and Amrabat are leaving, right? And in case McTominay is sold too, because he's on his last year of the contract, I don't think we have the budget to buy two or three CDNs. So let's see what Ineos manages to handle this situation. And if you have liked my videos so far, then I would really appreciate it if you can click on the like and subscribe button below to be a part of the community and to be notified of future uploads. Now moving on, the players who actually played well. First of all, Diego Dello. He has been a player of the season, no doubt about it. He is the one who has been the most stable, the most reliable throughout the season. Yes, he has had some bad games here and there. But for the majority of the season, he has been pretty good. Even in this game, the goal that is scored, right? He has made that same run from the fullback position to the attacker so many times. And this is the first time that it actually paid off. And we needed that deadlock to be broken. That Delo finish was such a calm, composed, striker's finish that it was really impressive. Delo has been not reliable only, but he was available, which is the biggest thing. In a season where we barely had defenders fit, Delo played almost all of the season and he played it pretty well. Amad also had a pretty good game. Diallo, despite not you know scoring in this game, he is showing his quality without even scoring. When he gets the ball, he tries to make something happen. He tries to dribble the ball. He puts in good crosses, good passing. So at this point, I really don't see how Anthony can step in. right? And if Ineos is ruthless, which I think they need to be, Anthony needs to be sold to fund for more attackers. right? At this point, I would actually believe that even if we sell Anthony for a massive loss, like if we sell Anthony only for like 20, 30 million, in that pricing, we can get a good youngster from somewhere like Brazil, France, Spain, whatever. If we can get a good youngster, I think that would be a better trade trade off than keeping Anthony at the club. And lastly, let's talk about Ireland as well. I have been saying throughout the, all of my videos and saying that he has been getting criticism unfairly. And this shows it again. Ireland is a quality talent. Ireland has shown time and time again that he wants to work for the club. That he wants to put in the hard work, which other players are not. And we were using him in the wrong way. He is not a target man. In the goal that he scored today, he did a good one-to-one. -one. He dribbled past the player. Then he dribbled in front of another player and shot with his weaker foot. That's not the qualities of a target man. That's a talented striker. That's something Rooney used to do. 
So I think if we play him through the strengths, Hoyland can be a very good talent for us. In this season, which has been depressing, no doubt about it, one of the worst seasons ever, the only ray of light has been the youngsters. Hoyland, Menu, Garnacho, even if you include Tello, fine. We have to build them, build the team around them going forward. And even Bruno, Bruno, once again, the player who has created the most chances, not only in the Premier League, but one of the top players in Europe as well. It's around these players who are committed to the team, who are willing to put blood, sweat, tears for the team that you need to build a team around. And let's talk about Ten Hag as well. We have finished the season, eighth position. We are out of Europe. Eighth is our lowest position we have ever had in the Premier League. And we have finished the season with a minus one goal difference. That is just embarrassing. Minus one goal difference. At United. So the tables are obviously against Ten Hag. The only ray of hope he has is the FA Cup final. If we can put in a decent display, right? If we don't get battered there, I think Ten Hag keeps his job. And I do think Ten Hag should keep his job anyways because I do believe he's the right manager and there are no good substitutes except for him. I will be in the market. Tuchel is probably saying at Bayern. Nagelsmann has extended his contract. I don't like Deserby. Deserby, once again, he has one win in 10 games. People can say all about good play style, but he is not winning games. Then we also have Potter. I don't want him. The only one left is probably Hansi Flick, but I don't know what's going on with it. I think he is in talks with Barca or something, so I'm not sure what's going on with it. So I, I do back Tenal. I do think he can do a lot better next season. If the squad stays fit and if we can remove a lot of the dead wood from the team. Now the season has ended, of course, City has won. But who actually cares? The media is trying to paint a picture that now that City has won four in the row, that they're the greatest team ever. That Guardiola is the greatest manager ever. That's just false. Recency bias. This City's success is built on financial fraud. The score that they have is based on financial fraud. People can say that the charges are from like 2018 or 2019 when Guardiola was barely there for a year. But it's a fact that those financial charges allowed Guardiola to have the team. Those are the charges which allowed him to keep a superstar. Superstar has solid team to build around. And coming on to Guardiola, Guardiola has never managed at a smaller club. You look at Jose Mourinho, who did it at Porto. You look at Klopp, who did it at Dortmund. You look at Sir Alex Ferguson, who did it at Aberdeen. Sir Alex won a European Cup against Madrid with Aberdeen. Guardiola has never done that. And I actually believe he will never do that. He probably won't ever leave City because it's an unlimited checkbook where he's revered as a god. Where Guardiola is bigger than City, the squad. Even if Guardiola leaves, either he doesn't manage again or he goes to either PSG or Barca again. That's the only two I can see him going to. Guardiola is never going to be the greatest manager as long as he stays at a top club and never manages a smaller club. As for the City being the best team, just no. I do think they're going to walk away from the 115 judges that they're not going to get any serious punishment. Because for them to get serious punishment, that would imply that the whole of FA is corrupted or they are incompetent. And to hide their own shame, I think they're not going to do anything to City. Like, they're not going to do anything drastic like removing their titles or relegating them to, you know, local leagues. They're never going to do that. I think it's just going to be like 5-10 point difference. The direction and that's it. They'll keep their titles, they'll keep their squad, whatever. So it's a shame that this is what the sport has come to, but money talks in football or the world. And City has money. That's it. So we just have to accept the fact that the media are going to paint City as a greatest team. They're going to paint Guardiola as a greatest team, but you as a football fan has to be aware that these are all lies and not something to believe in. Let's talk about the FA Cup of Final as well. 
we have we have won two of our last games, two games against decent teams, but we have only won them because both of these teams couldn't finish their chances. They were not clinical. And do you know who's clinical? Man City. So if we play like this against City, where we give them another fifteen chances, they'll defeat us easily. My only hope is that Varane and Martinez coming back and starting the game with probably Casemiro, Menu, and Bruno play. I think that should give us enough solidity to hopefully not concede a lot of shots. The score might be 2-1 United. That's my prediction. City will score, of course. But I'm thinking through some miracle, United also score and we win the cup. I really hope we do win the cup. And Klopp has also left. I'm happy to see Klopp leave to finally see Liverpool going back to being a really shit side. I don't think Arnie Slot can handle, you know, in the first season what Klopp is leaving. Like, whenever legacy manager has left, the next manager has never done well. Whether you look at Chelsea, whether you look whether you look at Chelsea when Mourinho left, you look at Wenger when, uh, when he left Arsenal, when you look at Sir Alex when he left United. So when Klopp is leaving, I don't think it will be a smooth transition where Liverpool will be challenging for title or, you know, Champions League, FA Cup, whatever. So it's going to be an interesting season, next season. United has to rebuild, Liverpool has to rebuild, Chelsea is rebuilding, Arsenal and City are going to strength it up. Tottenham is Tottenham. We never know what's going to happen. It's a disappointing season. It's not a season I would look like like to look back on. But we do have some hope from it. I am excited for the summer transfer window. So let's hope we can actually do something remarkable in it. Now, if you have watched the whole video so far, then I would really appreciate if you can click on the like and subscribe button below. And if you want to see how well we did against Newcastle in the last game week, then you can click on the link right here. I will see you all again after my next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.